I told you you'd get more than your fair share of alleluias today. Easter is the most important day of the Christian calendar. And yet for most, if not all of us, it is a celebration that tests our understanding. At Christmas time, we try to symbolize the joy we feel by exchanging gifts with loved ones. But no gift could come close to capturing the joy of Easter. On a very human level, Mary, the mother of Jesus, had nine months to prepare for his birth, a few tortured hours to steel herself for his passion and death, but nothing, nothing prepared her for his resurrection. Much of the joy of Christmas lies in anticipation. The joy of Easter lies in the days and months and years that follow. And yet, because we have heard the Easter story year in and year out, there is always the possibility that we will lose the sense of amazement that should accompany Easter. If we truly comprehended the depth and the meaning of the Easter event, we, like those who visited the empty tomb, like those who had been devastated by the horrific death of Jesus, would be utterly speechless. It is understandable that many of the followers of Jesus went back to fishing in the days and weeks following his death and resurrection. They needed the quiet hours in the boat to allow their belief to move toward understanding, to acknowledge that what they think happened did, in fact, happen. How does one make sense of the unimaginable? How can one move from pain and suffering and misery to the possibility of unimaginable, empowering joy? That is the position of Mary of Magdala in today's gospel. Mary is still mired in the nightmare of Jesus' passion and death, and now she is thrust into a mystery. She has come to the tomb of her friend only to find that the tomb is empty. It defies explanation. And so, as the apostle to the apostles, she rushes to announce the news to Peter and the beloved disciple. They, in turn, race to the tomb, though Peter is slowed by age, and more likely by the lingering guilt of his recent denial of Jesus. There is no rational explanation for what they find. Grave robbers would never leave the burial clothes neatly folded. They see and they believe, but understanding eludes them. To paraphrase T.S. Eliot, they have had the experience, but they have yet to grasp the meaning. Of course, Peter and the other disciples did eventually get it, as one can glean from Peter's testimony in our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But it takes time to allow joy to take hold of our lives, especially if we have grown accustomed to suffering and misery and despair. In the weeks to come, we will hear of the encounters between Jesus and his disciples, encounters that allowed them to begin to comprehend what it meant for Jesus to rise from the dead. In reflecting on their encounters, we will be invited into the mystery of Easter. We will be invited into the possibility of empowering joy. In doing so, the particulars of our lives may not change all that much, but the meaning of our lives and circumstances may be radically transformed. Like the first disciples, we may come to realize that Easter is only partially about what happened to Jesus. On a more fundamental level, Easter is about what happens to us as we live lives that are transformed by his rising. If we believe that Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead, 
then the way we live should be rooted in faith, not doubt, in forgiveness, not revenge, in hope, not despair, in love, not hate, in joy, not fear. The, re the resurrection of Jesus has changed everything. Will you allow it to change you?